Hello guys, welcome back to Patrick TV GH. This is your savings tutor, Mr. Patrick Barabankwa. A week ago, we met on this channel and we started a journey on retirement planning and pension. Um, we couldn't finish the part one. So we are here today to look at the part two, the continuation of what we started last week. Today, we are going to look at the new pensions law, what it means when we say tier one, tier two, tier three, and how Pensions Alliance Trust can help us to meet our pension goals. I hope that you are going to enjoy this session. But before we do that, we want to take a short commercial break from our main sponsors. That's Adum City Estate, Pension Alliance Trust, and BBH Microcredit. When we return from the break, we will now delve into the issues and look at how we can plan and prepare ourselves for our pension. I'll be right back. Have you heard about Pensure? Pensure is a hospitalization benefit, disability and life insurance benefits package underwritten by Alliance Life Insurance for Pensions Alliance Trust or PAT. As a contributor to PAT, you get to enjoy Pensure for free as your contribution accumulates under the Tier 3 and Inundasu Wealth Builder Pension Scheme. This hospitalization benefit disability and life insurance cover enhances your family's financial security. So what are you waiting for? Join Pensions Alliance Trust today and enjoy these free benefits too. Pension, your financial security enhanced. To sign up, call us on 0302-775-349 or 0501-553-839. Email us at clientservice at pensionsalliancetrust.com or use the web portal on our website www.pensionsalliancetrust.com Alternatively, you can reach us on any of our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Pensions Alliance Trust is available on your phone through the PAT app on both Android and iOS. Terms and conditions apply. Pensions Alliance Trust. Securing your future. guys welcome back from the commercial break um, before we went on the break I, I was talking about the importance of having a pensions plan last week we looked at part one today is part two and I'm blessed to have with me a team from pensions alliance tracks that's Mr. being slow Saki fuel he's the head of operations and investment strategies at pensions alliance trust and on my right this time I have with me miss Nelly Esme yeah. Asma. I have to take my time with the Esme. <laughs> but the spelling and the name, how it sounds, is, is, is a bit. She's the investment analyst at Pensions Alliance Trust. Today, we want to look at part two of our discussion. We want to go deep into what we started last week. We want to know the new pensions law, the breakdown, and what it means for you and I, one watching, and myself its importance. So let's first of all look at the pensions law, the new pensions law, and the tier, and what goes into each of the tier. I don't know if uh, Mr. Sakifi want to start or go to our uh, lady. Okay, let me uh, start. And I think uh, normally I hear ladies handle pension better than the men. <laughs> <laughs> so then she can add on to it. So 
the new pension law is uh, at seven six six. Okay, but uh, let me just go back a bit to before at seven six six came, what we had in existence then. So we have all these pension laws from the past that have been put together, amended, and all that. And before two thousand and eight. Uh, I think the country came to the realization that uh, people were retiring worse off than when they were working. Okay. So you will get somebody who is in a company car, has a driver, a security personnel in the office, there's somebody taking care of him, and then this person goes on retirement, and then suddenly, two, three years, the person is dead. And it was like that right up to 208 so government decided that no we need to look at our pension law and at the time it was just SNIT that was managing our pension so we pay our SNIT contribution you go on retirement they will do their calculations and then sometimes you get <laughs> lump sum and then you get monthly payments and and it, it wasn't very efficient and a lot of the people who were having challenges were those who were on lower salaries. Okay. I mean, if the big boys then were earning something, that was very big, and then they come on retirement and they are suffering. So for those who were earning little, there was, it was bad. So there were situations where people were earning, I think, 200, 150 CDs a month. And... I mean, if you bring it to our current economic environment, you would you would die. Okay. So government said that no, let's look at it. So they got a few people together and then they looked at our pension law in totality and they overhauled all the old ones. And in the old regime, we were paying thirteen percent to SNET. Okay, and then. SNET will manage it. And if the company wants to even do something extra, you would have a provident fund and all those things that they do for specifically for their employees. Okay. And I mean, there were mismanagement sometimes when it came to the provident fund because sometimes the company has promised to make payments. When business is not going good, they don't pay sometimes. So all that was looked into and then we got the Act 766 which was passed in 2008. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it wasn't operationalized in 2008 until two years after, uh, 2010. Yes. So that was when we began pension using the new law. Okay. And uh, let me just chip in uh, before I continue that Pensions Alliance Trust uh, was started in 2010. Uh, right when just around the same time. Yes. Okay. So we have been in the business from the beginning. Since <laughs> started. Yes. So when the Pensions Act was uh, assented to by the president uh, in 2010, uh, we started the rollout, and there were some significant changes in the pension sector. The first one was the establishment of a regulator. Okay. You know, in the past, uh, SNET was regulator, operator, I mean, the referee and the player at the same time. So the, they were the running... The and the judge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they were running the show the way they felt it should be run. Okay. Yeah. So the new law brought the regulator, who would also oversee SNET. Okay. So SNET uh, lost the role of the regulator then, because they were even managing the whole... So the regulator came in and then instead of just having all the monies going to SNIT to manage, the new law said that no, let's not do that. Let's break the money into tranches. So we created a tier system. Okay. And so we had tier one, which it was agreed will go to SNIT. Yes. SNIT was getting the 13% then. SNIT was getting 12.5 then. Okay. But it was said that, okay, let's increase the contribution to 13 
for snakes. Okay. And then we had the contributor. So the workers, they were contributing 5%. Okay. So what the new law did was that it increased the, that contribution to 5.5. So what we had at the end of the day was a change from the total contribution, which was 17.5 to 18.5. Okay. So there was a 1% increase in the contribution. And then there was also the creation of a third tier, which was supposed to take care of voluntary contribution. Okay. So in the past, we had the provident funds and all that with the institutions where staff can decide to contribute, the company can decide to match those contributions. But the law said that let's officialize this relationship. Let's bring it under regulation. So that at least uh, we know the monies are secured. So we had the tier three, which was voluntary. Okay. Tier one and two will still enjoy the tax benefit. Okay. So the contributions are taken before your taxes are calculated, which will reduce your tax. Okay. And if you are in the formal sector and you are doing the 18.5, the tier three give you the option to do a 16.5 more. Okay. So if you want to even contribute beyond what Snake was taking. In the past, you had to do it private. Okay. But this time, it is under the regulation. Okay. And there was also the creation of the informal sector. Okay. So as we mentioned in the previous episode, uh, for those who are not any salary with pay slip and all that if they want to save for their pension and they are the people who should even save for their pension more because they are at risk more than those who are in the formal sector okay i mean if you lose your job in the formal sector sometimes you get a package and i mean there's a bit of cushioning but for the informal sector i mean if I am a spare part I think we've been using spare yes. parts. <laughs> yes, and my business goes up. I mean, I just go home. I look you lose everything. Yes. So, what happened was the creation of the informal sector, which came under regulation. But for the informal sector, it was captured more like a personal pension. Okay. Because it didn't go through the SNET and then uh, the tier two and all that. So that was also created and they could contribute up to 35% of their earnings okay. to their pension. Okay. So it opened up the market for everybody. I mean, you wouldn't have an excuse to say that, okay, I'm not in this tie and uh, suit, listen, so I don't have to worry about my pension. Okay. So everybody started benefiting. Okay, and so, so not to cut you, um, you see, I, I understand what you're saying, and I want us to make it clear. So, tier one is SNET, yeah, and that means that if I'm 60 years, SNET will step in and be paying me monthly, as in benefits. Okay, so, I, I didn't mention that. So, in the old SNET, uh, there was that option that you get the monthly pension payment or the lump sum or the lump sum depending okay. on which one you opt for i think but the new law still gives that uh, monthly payment okay. from SNET. okay but your tier two contribution which is the 5.5 percent that goes to fund management those ones you get it as a lump sum so okay. when you retire okay so you will still have the monthly payment from SNET, which will be based on your tier one contribution. And then you get the lump sum, which will be based on your tier two. Okay. If you also have a tier three, then that would also be added to it. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I, I think I, I understand now. Okay. So um, in looking at the role of Pensions Alliance Trust as a trustee overseeing the work of a fund manager, what kind of investment do you 
give in terms of direction to the fund manager to ensure that people are getting one the return that they require and two yeah they are also safe okay so um for us um all trustees are regulated by mpr okay. and mpr has um investments they give us they have the investments that we can do they restrict it so we have the government of ghana um, we have the t bills we have the notes that we do we also have the opportunity of going into fixed deposits with the banks okay um there's an option of equities as well okay collective investment schemes those are the mutual funds the unit trusts as well we have local governments that's where you know you hear of the governments as labon okay. the, the energy sector yes so the mpra has listed investment options that the fund manager can and with limits see we try to restrict mpra has tried to restrict them so you don't think that oh i can put all the money into fixed deposits and if you look at the case where the banks collapsed everything you would have put all your eggs in one basket and it would have collapsed at a point so they give us the option to so we do um, mpra has given us the limit of 60 percent in government of ghana securities for the fixed deposit we have 35 percent that that's the allowable limit okay. we can do up to that um, for the collective investment schemes as well, um, I think we have 15% for that. Um, for the money market securities, 35%. So the, the regulator is a check for all of us. And for us trustees as well, what we do is that we do not advise. It is actually the fund manager that advises. So they okay. send us an advice. Okay. Then we also do our checks as well. So based on those, send us their recommendations. They will tell us that, okay, so based on the research we've done, this would like to go into maybe this energy sector, one of the Ghana, the cocoa bills. Then we will also do our checks here to see if what the investment they are going to is actually feasible per the research that they have done. We also do our own research. Then we approve because we are the trustees. We are standing in trust of our uh, employees, the employees that contribute to us. So we have to seek their best interest. So we do not allow the farm managers to invest as and when they want whatever investment they want to do. So we are the check for them. So when they bring the investments, we check, cross-check to see if it's suitable for the, the employees or the employees that contribute to us. Okay. And if we would give the right returns that we are looking for. So we look at the risk and return. So that's one aspect that we sit down and look at risk and return okay. to see if it's um, if it's risky, obviously it should give us more returns. And if it's less risky, then we know that the returns to are suitable. Yes. Okay. I think it has been a great discussion for the part two, looking at the tier and how it fits in. I'll give each of you one minute. <laughs> Why should our viewers, over one million people watching now, come to Pensions Alliance Trust? Okay. Let me close by saying that I you mentioned that if uh, when you get the right fund manager and the money is invested then the clients will get what you are supposed to get yeah okay for us at pat and we have been able to design a comprehensive benchmark which gives us the opportunity to know what we expect the fund manager to get given the current conditions on the market okay and that is what we use to measure all our fund managers. So we tell you that, okay, in this market as it is now, this is what we expect you to make. If you fall below it, then we know you are not doing well. Okay. If you go above it, then you are doing well. Okay. But because MPRA has set limits for everyone, it takes away the, the temptation to take more, more risk to get yeah. more. So that is what we have been able to do. And uh, if you cast your mind back, you realize that the pension sector was the least affected by all the banking crisis with the men's gold issue and all that. And it's because there's very good risk management. And at Pensions Alliance, we take risk management very, very serious. And then we also make sure we take a critical look at what the fund managers are doing. Okay. Thank you. Um, Madam Nelly, yes. your closing remarks. Okay, so to add to what Winslow said, um, 
to support why someone will choose Pensions Alliance Trust. We have the privilege of working with the top fund managers nationwide. Wow. They are the ones which handle our portfolio. Wow. And you would get to see, if you go to our website, you get to see some of our clients. And yeah. it's, it speaks at volumes. You know, if you get to see the clients that have entrusted their funds to us, it, gets, it gives you a rough idea of how we are performing in the market. That's and cool. if you also look at the products that we've rolled out, what we mentioned in the last episode, the Pen Adopt, the Pen Show, it goes to show that we actually care about our clients and we seek their best interests. So go no further. Pensions Alliance Trust is the company to come to. So I'm sure you have enjoyed our session tonight. Um, we're talking about pension, the law, how Pension Alliance Trust fix some of the things that were not there in the past and their products their client base, the fund managers that they are using. I believe you have enjoyed our session. Kindly check on our subscribe button on the channel. It's red. Just click on it. Follow us on all social media platforms on Patrick TV GH and we'll meet again next week with another educative session on this channel. See you.